very warm welcome to you on this very special show, Innovation, Architecture and Future. This best describes Dubai and its very existence. In fact, since its inception, Dubai has shown itself as a futuristic premise, becoming home to 200 nationalities from across the world. It is this approach, in fact, to connect the world that we have the Expo 2020 Dubai, which is a global event that the UAE is hosting over a period of six months and which started on the 1st of October. It is a world gathering like none other where we have 192 countries coming together at one venue to showcase a better, brighter future together. This year, it becomes much more significant as the UAE ushers in 50-year celebration of its inception and India celebrates 75 years of its independence. It is this association between the two nations which makes the Expo a much more enriched experience. A balance between architectural marvels, business opportunities and technological innovations mixed with cultural entertainment, food experiences will feature among the exhibits or pavilions showcasing the ingenuity of more than 190 countries. To understand the cooperation with nations as well as the idea behind Expo 2020 Dubai, we bring to you a very special conversation with Her Excellency Reem Al Hashmi, UAE Minister of State for International Cooperation and Director General of Expo 2020 Dubai. A multifaceted personality, Her Excellency has been instrumental in driving the idea behind Expo 2020 Dubai vision where the world is converging together for the next six months. She is in conversation with someone who needs no introduction, the magnificent director, producer, actor and advisory board member of Expo 2020 Dubai, Shekhar Kapoor. Why the Expo? Why? Because it wasn't easy. I've gone through the whole yeah. you know, the history of how UAE got the Expo, Dubai got the Expo. So why was it so important? So when we submitted our bid in 2011, it was for 2020, which is now 2021 because of COVID, to fully and truly manifest the story of this country and the story of this city, which is that all of us from around the world can live together in peace, in harmony, and in prosperity. Expo was a physical manifestation that proves the vision that we've set out for all these decades ago. As you know, we have about 200 nationalities living in this country comfortably. Um, we are stronger and better because of it. And we have lived in this multicultural um, community, learning from one another and growing from one another and becoming richer as a result of one another. When we started, you know, a very um, robust program with schools, with artists, with um, all kinds of walks of life and asked them, what do you want to see in a World Expo in Dubai? We had, you know, the most incredible responses. Post-COVID or through COVID, people just wanted to really get together. And the incredible thing, Shakar, is from the very beginning of this journey to where I'm sitting with you now, the answers didn't change so much. People want to live in dignity, People want to solve some of the largest problems that we all face, whether it's resources or it's employment opportunities. People want to live good, dignified lives with um, access to healthcare, access to education. And so 
by bringing all these different voices and different age groups together, we found that there are certain things that ring true and they are consistent whether you're in Chile or you're in China. It's more or less the same. And it is centered around how you can create a better future when you band together and connect with one another. Um, we've, we've looked at this expo as the story of everybody else. We just host, we have the privilege of hosting it here in Dubai. But it's, it's the Indian story, and it's the Chilean story, and it's the Ethiopian story, all in its different vantage points as it looks at what does it mean to connect minds to create the future? Because it's, it's, it's there in the ether that X country and Y and Z have all spoken about their aspirations and the aspirations of their nation and fellow country men and women. Those, um, those types of projects are not a real estate project, and they're not expo projects, and they're not government projects. They're all human projects. They're all stories. We think there's a way to, um, to live with this, and I say this with the utmost humility because COVID has um, has thrown us to the ground, it has brought the world to a halt. But there are ways in which we can still emerge triumphant. And so we're, we're, we're focused on delivering a safe event, a um, scientifically sound um, event with measures that are adhered to and that are governed by, by international organizations. And we are hopeful and optimistic that you can wear a mask and still see this and still enjoy it and um, be conscious of your proximity to others, but still be able to find joy in you and with your family and loved ones. I love India. I have a very uh, strong affinity. My parents spent a lot of time in India. They both speak Hindi. But there's a really special homage that we are particularly designing at Expo for what we hope is many, many Indian visitors coming, whether they are residents of the UAE or coming from India. The India Pavilion is one of the largest on site. Um, we have a beautiful uh, program on culture and dance and sports and great food and a lot of our entertainment as well as our celebration of Diwali will be centered around uh, Indian tradition and Indian um, richness and culture. And so we're very, uh, we're very excited about welcoming the Indian visitor and uh, really a lot of this is part of celebrating all kinds of uh, cultures and all kinds of uh, stories from all around the world and the Indian one is one that we feel very uh, connected to as Emiratis and me certainly on a personal level as well. It's 182 days of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, or rather once-in-a-generation at least opportunity, in a part of the world that has never seen a World Expo. Um, in this might and in this size and in this scale, there's so much to do and there's so much to experience and I can't wait to share it with everyone because it's been in the making for a long time and we're very keen on um, having visitors from all over come and explore the whole world in one place. You don't need to um, hop on different planes to get to different, different destinations. You'll see the best that there is here between October 1, 2021 and March 31, 2022. I was trying to explain that to a taxi driver here in Dubai and I said, he said, are you saying that I can visit the whole world with one ticket? Yes. And I said, yeah, well, actually, that yes. is true. Yeah. 
the problem that he's going to face is, is he's going to need more than one day yeah. because there's so much to see. But if I look at sort of what the Japanese are doing and then what the French are doing, what India is doing, um, what the United States is doing, what Switzerland is doing, what Angola is doing, Angola have a beautiful exhibition, then suddenly you, you kind of see, oh, wait a minute, this is, I've just traveled all five continents. And it's special to realize that there's so much learning out there that one could be exposed to and take their families to and, um, and learn from. You know, this is also, should be fun for kids to come here. Yeah. Fun is an important element. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's how you, that's how you learn is if it's interesting to retain this knowledge, retain this information for it to become knowledge. And so if it's not fun, forget it. How do you um, make learning and de facto doing good with that information and that knowledge um, interesting and exciting and fun? And so when we started off, we looked at the IoT or the Internet of Things and everything is smart today. Um, and how do we link up all those different modes of intelligence in a way that also brings value, also feels good? Because that's what I want for the site. I want memories to be created here. I want families to get together. I want uh, partners and friendships and strangers to be able to pick up conversations with each other in a space that feels, that is inviting. Tell me about this, this idea of play for kids. Yeah. The play comes in the form of sort of asking questions. In the sustainability pavilion or in Terra, you will find different levers about what would you, what would you rather have. And so your house is burning, what would you rather take with you? Or would you rather X or would you rather Y? The play comes in the form of this type of inquisitiveness where kids also ponder, is it worth saving one large organism or a hundred microorganisms? And recognizing that there's no one wrong or right answer is part of the sort of expanding the depth and expanding the curiosity that the children already naturally have. It's us adults or we adults who tend to look at things in a binary fashion. The objective of all of that is to say kids have a critical, if not instrumental, role in teaching their parents. It's not always one way parents teach kids. I think, you know, my greatest lessons came from, from really pondering the questions that my kids ask. I'm from India, and the first question they'll ask me in Hindi is, which means, how about food? Yeah. Right. yeah, well, tons of it and, <laughs> and incredible, incredible palate across the board. We've tried to cater to all, all ranges of palate, if you will, and really bring the best of the best, but also bring the street food to the table so you can really explore great authentic cuisine, great music. What I do notice is the use of technology here. I mean, when you say smart city yes. or smart place, you have to use technology. And the more we study the, our future, like our climate, we realize that technology is going to be a very important part of that. Are you showcasing some of that modern, the new technology? We are. I think that's what makes um, expos in general exciting, but this particular expo interesting is it'll be an opportunity to see innovation from around the world and to play with that innovation, understand how it impacts dance and how it impacts food and how it impacts how we solve for some of the greatest challenges that, that, have, that has befallen us as a, as a human race and to almost see the future but see it now. And tell me about the other pavilions, because I've been to Al-Basil and I've seen it and I've 
is one of the most incredible immersive experiences I've yeah. had with 50 projectors lighting up a dome that is about 14 or 15 stories high. Yeah. And I can just like I was watching a travel through space. And I thought, yes. wow, I was literally in a rocket traveling. It was yes. quite stunning. Yeah. And that's why I said never before yeah. and likely never again. I mean, when you come to, to the site, whether it's this building or it's Elif, which is our mobility pavilion, um, which really pays homage to human progress, how we began as human beings, um, this constant desire to do more and to do better and to nudge on progress, um, or it's the Al Wasl Dome, or it's the incredible country pavilions. We have 192 countries that are here and they bring their cuisine and they bring their dance and they bring their artists. And in all of that, they're saying something. And what they're saying is, look at who we are and know better and know more who we are. And if we do more of that with all of them, then you're really looking at a better place and a better world. Tell me about Elif. So Elif is our mobility pavilion, which was designed by Norman Foster. It takes you through a journey of mankind as, it exp as mankind explores the realm of possibility. We start with horses for movement, and then we delve into other modes of transportation, cars, trains, etc. And it talks about the importance of exploration itself. But the focus is the Arab world, and it delves into the great thinkers of this region. We have a beautiful, rich, um, historic region, the, the center of the three monotheistic religions, the crossroad of east-west, north-south, south-south. Um, this region is, is special. When I say this region, it's, it's us, it's the Arab world, it's Africa, it's the subcontinent. And as we, as we look at these great giants who added to um, the global thinking around, whether it's arithmetic or astronomy, we recognize that mathematics. mathematics, human progress actually is never ending. That's another forever word for you. That as long as humans are there, they'll constantly search for more and for better and for progress. Um, it takes you through this journey to then finally recognize that progress and the possibility of achieving progress lies in each of us. And I don't want to, to steal the thunder of the pavilion, but there is something that is related to space at the very end. And that's sort of one of the things we did you know, in 2015 or 16, when we still didn't have the Hope Probe which the UAE launched last year. And it's serendipitous that some of the projects that ended up coming to bear fruit are also projects that, this, that these buildings pay testament to. Um, there are a few other really remarkable uh, buildings on site and programs on site. We have a People and Planet program where all of the main elements that we focus on, whether it's on climate change or it's in rural and agricultural development or it's in knowledge and learning or travel, is all centered around people and planet. The Opportunity Pavilion pays testament to the 2030 SDGs. And it basically does two main things. It inspires agency in all of us, which is what this expo is also about. All of us are responsible and all of us can do something about the planet we live in. And it also encourages empathy. So you are not in your own bubble. You're not your own individual. You're part of a larger collective whole. And if we all got together and did better with one another and for one another, we'd actually be able to achieve the SDGs. Um, the, interesting thing, thing, the interesting thing about the Opportunity Pavilion, which we're calling Mission Possible, is that it also highlights SDG 17, which is untraditional partnerships. 
Now, what I mean by untraditional partnerships are sometimes when you have an artist and a private sector tycoon and a government official and a, uh, a very informed citizen and a young college student all together in a deep heated conversation about tackling the future, you can come up with some pretty amazing insights. And so these untraditional types of partnerships are also what Expo is going to do its best to be able to foster. If I um, am an aspiring artist, yes. tell me how I can come here and explore my own art or how can I explore myself at if the, I'm an aspiring at artist? At the very least, you come to get inspired by the sheer diversity of artwork you will see from all over the world. You do not need to travel to any one country to see what they have to offer. Those countries are bringing their special art here, whether it's in public art or it's in exhibits. You can, at the very least, be inspired. And more importantly, you can then showcase your own art. And so you can share that in some of our public realm and you can speak to it in all of our digital platforms to say, I am X, Y, I enjoy doing this. And you can post that out there and Expo will be amplifying those voices during the event. An interesting conversation between Her Excellency Reemal Hashmi and Shikhar Kapoor that has set the tone for Expo 2020 Dubai, an unforgettable event that opened its doors to the world on the 1st of October and runs for a period of six months. It brings together 192 countries all under one roof. So do visit Expo 2020 Dubai. Don't miss this once in a generation experience. Thank you so much for watching this very special interview.